In this video, we're gonna learn how to implement paging in ASP.NET Core Web API. Paging is one of the most important concepts in building RESTful APIs. As a matter of fact, we don't want to return a collection of all resources when calling our API. That can cause performance issues and it's in no way optimized for public or private APIs. It can cause massive slowdowns and even application crashes in severe cases. If you prefer reading about this topic and want to download the source code, you can visit the paging article on our site. The link is in the description below. Also, some degree of previous knowledge is needed to follow this video. It relies heavily on the ASP.NET Core Web API series on CodeMaze. So, to learn more about the ASP.NET Core Web API development, we strongly suggest you go through the series. The link will be in the description as well. Before we do any changes to the source code, let's inspect how it looks right now and how you would probably begin with any project. In our case, we have the owner controller that does all the necessary actions on the owner entity. One particular action that stands out and that we need to change is the get owners action. In this action, we call the get owners method from owner repository. Also, we can see the find all method. It is just a method from a base repository class that returns the whole set of owners. We have covered this architecture in our video about the repository pattern in ASP.NET Core Web API. As you can see, it's a straightforward action, meant to return all the owners from the database ordered by name. And it does just that. But in our case, there are just a few account owners. What if there were thousands or even millions of people in the database? And then add to that a few thousand of API consumers. We would end up with a very long query that returns a lot of data. Mind you, we don't want to change the base repository logic or implement any business logic in the controller. What we want is to provide a way to retrieve only a certain number of owners by specifying that number in the query string parameter in a request. Also, we want to constrain our API not to return all the owners even if someone calls the route without a single query string parameter. That said, let's start by changing the controller. Here, we use the from query attribute to point out that we'll be using query parameters to define which page and how many owners we are requesting. The owner parameters class is the container for the actual parameters. And we call the getOwners method from the owner repository class, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll implement it soon. We also need to actually create the owner parameters class, since we are passing it as an argument to our controller. Let's create it in the models folder of the entities project. We are using the max page size constant to restrict our API to maximum of 50 owners. Then let's create a page number property and set it to one. Additionally, we create a private field page size and set it to 10. Of course, to expose that field, we create a page size property. And in the get method, we just return the page size field. And in the set method, we set the value of the page size with some basic condition, limiting the highest value to the max page size value. Now, let's implement the most important part the repository logic. In the iOwner repository interface, we need to extend the getOwners method by adding the owner parameters parameter. Also, let's modify the getOwner method 
in the owner repository class. Here we extend the method with an additional parameter and attach the skip extension method to state what we want to skip. Then call the take method with the page size as a parameter. And finally, convert this result to list. Ok, the easiest way to explain this is by example. Say we need to get the results for the third page of our website, counting 20 as the number of results we want. That would mean we want to skip the first 3 minus 1 times 20, which is 40 results, and then take the next 20 and return them to the caller. Now, let's start our application, open Postman, and send the request where we ask for the second page with the two owners per page. And we can see we have the required result. Now, what can we do to improve this solution? Since we're returning just a subset of results to the caller, we might as well have a page list instead of list. Page list will inherit from the list class and will add some more to it. We can also move the skip take logic to the page list since it makes more sense. Let's implement it. First, let's create a helpers folder and a page list class inside. Make it generic and inherit from list t. We need several properties here. So let's start with the current page. Total pages, page size, and the total count. We can see all of them have a private setter. Then we create the has previous property that will be true only if the current page property is greater than 1. Also we need the has next property that will be true only if the value of the current page is less than the number of total pages. In the constructor we provide the items, the count, the page number and the page size parameters and set the total count property, the page size, the current page and the total pages property. Additionally, we call the addRange method to add the items to the collection. We require one additional static method that returns page list t and accepts the source, the page number and the page size parameter. In this method, we count the elements inside the source collection and take the items by applying the skip and the take methods to our source. Finally, we return the result with all the required parameters. Now that we clear that out, Let's change our owner repository and owner controller accordingly. First, we need to change the interface by modifying the return type. Then, our repository class, where we modify the return type and return the page list owner 
with the attached to page list method where we pass the find all method execution with the page number and the page size parameters. In our controller, we create a metadata object and specify all the required properties for the pagination. After that, we use the response headers dot add method to specify the header name and the data for that header. Lastly, we just modify the log message to specify the total number of owners we return. Now we can start our application again and send the same request as we did earlier. And there we go, we get the same exact result. But now we have some additional useful information in the expagination response header. As you can see, all of our metadata is here. We can use this information when building any kind of front-end pagination functionality. You can play around with different requests to see how it works in other scenarios. There is one more thing we can do to make our solution even more generic. We have the owner parameters class. But what if we want to use it in our account controller? Parameters that we send to the account controller might be different. Maybe not for paging, but we can send a bunch of different parameters later on and we need to separate the parameters classes. Let's see how to improve it. What we want to do is create an abstract query string parameters class. We'll use this class to implement mutually used functionalities for every parameter class we will implement. And since we have owner controller and account controller, that means we need to create owner parameters and account parameters classes. Let's start by defining query string parameters class inside the models folder of the entities project and move our paging logic inside the class since it will be valid for any entity we might want to return through the repository. Now, we need to create account parameters class inside the models folder. And then inherit the query string parameters class in both account parameters and the owner parameters class. Now, these classes look a bit empty, but if you implement search or sort or filter, you would populate them with other useful parameters and see what the real benefit is. For now, it's important that we have a way to send a different set of parameters for account controller and owner controller. After this, in the same way we did for the owner entity, you can modify the iAccount repository interface, the account repository class and the account controller to apply the paging logic. Just try it, a practice makes wonders. Well, that's all for this video. Your support is highly appreciated, so if you like this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Also, don't forget you can visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. Additionally, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.